So I got asked this question recently about how do you determine the poison ratio for lattice structure? And it got me thinking, and this is why I'm making this video to kind of point you to an easy, quick numerical way that you can determine the poison ratio for lattice structures. This is because lattice structures are full of spaces within them, spaces of pores. And so the presence of those spaces will cause the formation to be different in comparison with a solid bulk. And therefore, we'll expect that the Poisson ratio for such lattice structures may be slightly different from that from a solid bulk. So this is what we're going to do in this video. Let's sit back and relax as we get started. Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Welcome to CM Videos. This is a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever computational problem that you're dealing with. So as we get started with this video, the first thing I want to say is that this video was viewer requested. So Nani Vignesh requested this video and it says that I'm trying to calculate the Poisson ratio for a 3D lattice structure in which he's applying, he or she, I'm not sure, is applying a compression load in the y-axis for a value of seven millimeter displacement he's a bit confused this viewer is a bit confused to which nodes need to be selected for extracting logistical and transverse strain and therefore he needs my valuable suggestion and this comment was put in this video which you can see in the card here where i made a similar video simply for a different kind of material so we want to apply the same thinking that we use in that video into uh, lattice structures. The first thing I want to talk about is the theory behind what we're trying to do. It's really important to understand the theory. And basically, the expression for Poisson ratio is the ratio, the negative of the ratio of the transverse strain to the longitudinal strain. This is what Jeremy McMix tells us. So if we rearrange that equation, therefore the transverse value, the transverse strain is equal to the negative of the Poisson ratio times the longitudinal strain. So if we think about this, so this is a representative volume element or the unit itself, whatever configurations, it's applying a longitudinal value in this direction. So this is the main direction of loading. And so we express a contraction on the other axis leading to a transverse strain. And obviously these are the, refer um, the boundary conditions to the problem. So we try and put a graph to describe what is going on. So obviously the longitudinal axis is the independent loading and then the transverse direction goes that way such that the, the point from this simulation can, when you combine them together, you end up with a series of plots like this, of which if we then put a linear fit, you get something that looks like that. So the equation of that line becomes the equation that we described above, where the slope of that line is basically the Poisson ratio. So basically what we need to then do is to generate the longitudinal and the transverse strain from any simulation, and then find the, the slope of the resulting line of the plot of longitudinal strain to transverse strain and that gives us the Poisson ratio. If this is the kind of content that you like, please I do encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel so when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. I also want to highlight that there is a CM Videos Insider Group which I say regularly send every week. Newsletters talk about behind the scene in, in CM Videos and more about products that are available on CM videos and also offer my perspective on a lot of computational modeling issues. If you're interested in these kind of things, please do subscribe to this uh, CM videos inside that group. So to illustrate this for the case that Nani wants to investigate, so what we're going to be using is clearly a lattice structure and the lattice structure that we're going to use here is a simple cubic body centered cubic lattice structure on the y-axis transverse compression and it looks like this again if you really want to learn more about how this particular lattice was constructed again look at the video in the card that explains a little bit more about how the virtual domain was generated so we're not going to worry about that in this video so this is our typical unit cell so it's going to be held at the base in this way and also held on the side in that way remember this is going to be a 3d problem so i'm going only showing this in 2d first but we're going to do it in 3d in the actual video now we're going to apply a compressive load at the top end here so what that means is that we're going to compress the system to create this Poisson ratio that we want so our longitudinal direction will be in that case so that's where the longitudinal strain will be happening because that is the direction where we're applying our load so this is what is driving the behavior of the system now if this is a longitudinal direction then the corresponding transverse strain would act on this axis so basically as this body is being compressed it's going to be extrude expanding in that direction so we need these two reference values to generate our Poisson ratio now as a bulk virgin material the Poisson ratio for the pure titanium alloy that we're using in this model is 0.342 Assuming that there are no holes within it, no spaces within it, and everything is a complete structure. Now, the question here is, 
what will be the Poisson ratio for the lattice cell structure? Will it be exactly the same as 0.342 or will it be different? And I guess this is why Nani wanted this video made or this idea because how can we find the Poisson ratio for something that's full of pores within it? We don't expect it to be exactly the same or something different. I expect that it will be different because the presence of the pores will change the way the structure will be here. And we can find that out when we run the actual simulation to extract certain values. Now, to determine the Poisson ratio, it's obviously straightforward like we talked about before we'll try and introduce our friends from here so this is an xy plane of this case so that means our longitudinal axis will be the strain in the yy axis and then the transverse strain will be the strain in the xx axis so that means the resultant Poisson ratio for this type of loading that we're dealing with will be the Poisson ratio 2 1 which is vyx and that means we're looking at minus this transverse strain divided by the longitudinal strain so this is how we're going to get so we're going to get v21 from this simulation if we want to get v12 then we're going to do a tensile loading in this case with their corresponding transverse strain in that case but that's not what we're doing here another thing that we can get from this same simulation will be a case for v23 because we're applying the loading here so there will also be a contraction or expansion in the z-axis and so from the same simulation we can also get v23 so for the v23 case you're looking at a transverse strain in the z-axis divided by the original main loading of the strain in the yy axis so this is the philosophy for determining poisson ratio of different types especially for something that is um, transversely autotropic you know like a composite material for this kind of system that we're dealing with with regular structure will expect that these two values will not be market markedly different all right so let's now go into abacus as we begin so here we are in abacus and what i have already shown here is the complete simulation of the result that we're expecting for this composite material so basically it's a, a lattice structure and it's undergoing compression and this is the kind of result that you generate from this but just before we go into that i just want to run through to a few things in the background just to show you what's happening here so so the first thing is that basically this is a simple cubic material as we already seen so it's been meshed correctly so this is a sort of mesh that we find out from it and right at the beginning i created a few sets set of sets so the first of them is the front set so if you double click here so you create you need to create a set for the front another set for the top and another set for the z front because we are going to use them to extract our stress our displacements that lead ultimately for us to generate the Poisson ratio i also in introduced a reference point here you know and so you need to create a reference point by simply going to tools reference point and then you can create a reference point for your result and when i created the reference point i made it into a set so that's the first thing you need to bear in mind and of course we did a section assignment to link this model to the material that we're using so what is the material that we're using in this case so the material will be titanium alloy and what is happening so the density of the titanium alloy the elastic properties are given the plasticity of the density we're using a johnson cook hardening law for this and then a rate dependent model for that it doesn't really matter but just to kind of give you an idea of what we, we are doing the key information to pick out here is that the elasticity of the bulk titanium alloy is 0.342 so hopefully we should recover that value but because we're looking at the a lattice structure this value will be different and then of course we created a section that we linked that with so that's what we have here and then the next thing we need to look out for here is steps so we created a simple static general loading a static loading for this analysis and then in terms of our history output the thing that we're trying to track the history output basically are the displacement so if you see here the reaction forces and the displacement in the xyz direction of a set and what is that set is a reference point set so this is what we need because then we're going to use it subsequently to generate graph for this model so that's the reference point that we're using and then we need to create a constraint equation so what this constraint equation does is that because i'm going to apply the load on the top but i don't want to apply it directly there because i'm going to use that to extract the displacement subsequently so i do a kinematic linking between what's going on the top with that reference point and i'm using a constraint equation where the coefficient here is one and minus one so the first set name will be the front set at the top linked to the reference point where i'm going to apply my load and we're doing that into the in the growth freedom two which is the y-axis so that basically says that if i apply a load here it will be translated there 
and that's how we're going to apply our load the other final thing you need to be aware of is the back so again i just fixed the back in the one axis okay and then the y base i fixed it in the two axis the z axis i fixed it in the z axis and then i need to introduce in y compression so i've mislabeled it as compression so it should actually be a y compression so because this load is going in this direction and it's linked to that phase so i've chosen a value of minus one because the system is four millimeter inside so this minus one is basically 25 percent strength so we want to get a 25 percent strength into the model so that's all that we need in setting up the model and then at the end we apply our results and then we generate set the model to run and we generate this result now what we really want to do is to extract the poisson ratios and so what do we do okay so the first thing here is to extract history variables or extract some reference terms so what we're going to do here is that we're going to use the field output so if i continue field output now i'm going to do that based on displacement so i want to get field output of displacement and because i'm interested in displacement I, I need to then move from an integration point because that refers to the element level to a unique nodal because nodes are what gives you displacement so unique nodal and then what we then need to set is the set that is associated with this so the node set that we so we start with the x front of number one displacement in the one direction okay and then go back to this variable and look for displacement and we're looking for displacement in the one axis so x is in the one axis direction and want the displacement from that so i click save now i said the xy data will be extracted from the field output this is fine and what you notice here on the right side is that it's plotted quite a range of all the displacements for that front and we want to find the average displacement on that front phase this is absolutely important because if you look at this view so if you look at the view from the side you see the front is not perfectly flat so because of the nature of this it's kind of see having a non-uniform deformation a bit so this end is protruding so really what we want is some kind of homogenized prediction homogenized value for that front face because if depending on the point you're selecting you get slightly different Poisson ratio so it makes sense to if you put a sensor in the front of this you're trying to sense what the displacement on that front so you can find all the displacement on this front face then that displacement averaged across that whole phase will be what we need this is slightly different from a previous video in which i was using periodic boundary condition and with periodic boundary condition you only need the corner nodes to apply and extract your values this is a little bit different here here we need all the nodes on that phase so what we're going to do again we click on this point and we now operate on that data so in operating on this data what we want to then do first and foremost is to look for the expression that we want which is the average so we use this average function appears there then i click here press down shift or drag to the end press down shift and select so basically i'm selecting everything which is the displacement on that front face and then add that into the equation into the expression and then we can plot this expression cancel so that gives us the average displacement of that front face so what we're going to do here is if i right click here i'm going to say on group i don't want it to group all the children so if i go back to the end then i can right click here and click edit so what this will do is that it will generate for me the actual raw numbers so i'll just drag and select all of them and click ok so i've copied the raw number that defines this life this line so i had already formatted this this data this excel sheet which is where i'm going to put in all these values i'm going to use it in trying to extract our so whatever i've copied from the excel data i'll paste it in here so this represents what's happening on the x front set in the one axis so what we're going to do is to go back to abacus now inside abacus i'm going to delete all this information here so delete it okay so that gives me a blank canvas that we can work with so we're going to do the y-axis now so again we do the same we want to do a field output operation on that and unique nodal is required but our node set will be the y top set okay and what displacement are we looking for the two axis displacement and then we save it so we've got all the data as well so what we then need to do is again operate on this data using the average function click on there drag to the end press down shift click the last one add that expression so that gives us that and then we plot 
So what we find here is the displacement of the Y top and it's clearly going in the negative direction up to minus one because that tells you this is the load that we imposed. So the temp at the end here, so I'll temporarily plot there, I'll use that and then I'll drag all the way to the end, select all, right and copy, click copy. Now go back to the Excel data, then paste that into the second position. So that gives us the second data. Now we go back and look at what we need to do. Okay, so again, I want to clear up this data because I don't want it to be messed up. So I'll delete that. Now I'll go back and do the field output unique nodal in the third axis this time around. Everything is the same. So, so the node set will be clearly the Z front. Okay. And in the third axis, I will save. Okay. So now again, it defines everything that we need. So we operate on that particular data using the average function. Click on the first one, then go out to the last one, add that expression, plot this expression. And then that gives us the displacement in the Z axis. Okay. So we go back to the end. There must be a temporary plot. It did this temporary plot. Start from there, go to the end. Right click, copy. Now go back to the Excel file. So we paste it into that environment. Now, so the next thing we then need to do here is to get some plot. So what I'm going to do here is I, let me just delete the, so and look at what we have here. So the RVE length is four, the width is four, and this data that we have here is the data of longitudinal stress and strain. So what is our longitudinal strain? So we look at here. So basically the strain in the two direction divided by the distance edge length in the two direction, which is four. Okay. So that's what gives, that gives you. Now, what is the transverse strain in this first instance? The strain in the one, the displacement in the one direction divided by the length in the one direction. Okay. So we get all that, evaluate it, double click on that, then evaluate everything. So you could see clearly 25% strain in negative direction is what's happening in the two, two directions. So that gives us what we'll expect. So we got all that and then we, when we plot it, we plot them together. And then what I, I need to then do is to add a trend line, which is a linear trend line, display equation on the graph, set the intercept to zero. Okay. That could be something you do because the equation says the intercept has to be set to zero. It's giving us a value of that 0.315. So now the next thing to do, so this is for the E22 and E11. So what about the E22 and E33? So the same kind of setup was put together. Okay. Uh, and then I can set my intercept to zero. So again, we get a similar value as what we had before. The only difference is that the transverse direction in this case is actually in the third axis divided by the edge length. They are all the same in all cases. So use that information and plot it across board and then you end up with a graph that looks like this. The key takeaway from this is that the Poisson ratios are different from that of the bulk material. The Poisson ratio of the bulk material was 0 0.342. The Poisson ratio of this lattice structure is around 0 0.315, which is different. And this is what you expect. And this is why it's important to use this numerical method in calculating the Poisson ratio of this kind of materials. So if you want to find the Poisson ratio for a 2D system where you use periodic boundary condition in the model, then the video here would help you do that. If you also want to learn a little bit more about lattice composites generally and everything about them, here is a playlist that can help you do that. Thank you for your interest in this channel. If you have not subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel so that when content like this are made, you'll be the first to see it.